Welcome back. Used to be once upon a time long ago in a distant land called the United States of America that if you were an employer and you hired somebody who was not a citizen of the United States to work for you, you could go to jail. Yes, you could go to jail. In fact, uh, you know, it, it happened quite frequently. In fact, it happened so frequently that the United States came up with a program in the late 50s and early 60s called the Bracero Program, Bracero Program, uh, where the people coming into the United States would actually be issued an ID card so that they could work at picking, you know, lettuce in the fields or whatever it was, mostly in California. And but they had to go home at the end. But they had some rights, and there was. But it, you know, the program was horribly abused, and it basically became a slave labor program, and so it got abandoned. And so then Ronald Reagan came along and said, "Okay, I'm going to solve this problem. We're going to give five million people amnesty, and we're going to stop putting employers in jail. We're just going to ignore the law from now on." And every president since Ronald Reagan has ignored the law. Every employer, excuse me. Uh, during the administrations of every president since Ronald Reagan has ignored the law. And basically, rich white employers, mostly it's rich white employers, have not gone to jail. And as a consequence, they've been hiring people who are not citizens. And, of course, if you put on a, put out a, hey, money here for you, if you come here, sign, then people will come and say, give me some of that money, especially people who are very poor from very poor countries. So we have this illegal employer problem in the United States, and one solution that's been proposed to the employer, the illegal employer problem, that again doesn't propose throwing employers in jail, is to say, well, you know, why don't we just have a national database of people who are workers, who you know, who, who taxpayers, people who are actual citizens, and when somebody applies for a job, you put in their date of birth, their social security number, their address, and uh, if this database happens to have their driver's license in it as well, you can even take a look at their picture and say, yeah, okay, that looks like Ralph, the guy who's applying for the job, and the employer will have some level of protection. This Im implies that there actually will be penalties for the employers, which seems to me like a good thing. But the employers don't seem to like it. Why would that be? David Beer is a policy analyst with the conservative Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI.org. David, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Why would you be opposed to making sure that people who are working in the United States are actually U.S. citizens? Well, I'm not opposed. I think that border security is a very important part of I'm any not talking sort of about border security. Reform. But I don't think that employers should be put in jail for for breaking the um, law hiring people which is a perfectly non-violent activity i think the responsibility of border security should be on the government and not on employers okay now employers hang on just a second david you said that this is because this is non-violent if if i uh hack the pin number on somebody's credit card and i go to the bank and and i get it to you know spit out 300 bucks to me and it dings their card um that's not violent you don't think there should be a law against that? I shouldn't go to jail for that? Well, theft is a different matter. Uh, I think that the... How is this not theft of employment from American citizens? What is, what is the criminal activity is on the part of the immigrant, not on the part of the employer. The employer's No, it's on the part of the employer. The law is very here, clear. No, no, yes, it's not. There the are employer laws against... goes to jail. Listen, this, I am an employer. I've been law. through this. Back before Reagan stopped right. enforcing these rules, I owned an ad agency in Atlanta, and we we wanted to hire a guy. We we had to we were producing a product for a multinational corporation, and I needed somebody who spoke Japanese, Spanish, and English. I actually put an ad in the Atlanta Constitution Journal and found somebody. I, oddly yeah. enough, he was the son of a of a, a, a diplomat, and but he didn't have a work permit. And I had to go down to the IRS offices personally. We had to jump through all kinds of hoops to get this guy the equivalent of an F-1B visa. That's very unfortunate. Well, I agree. No, it's it's, I think it's totally employers. appropriate. It's totally it's appropriate. It's very unfortunate that you have to go through extreme difficulties in order to hire the people that you want to hire. That's not a good thing. That's I was a, very it, pleased to do it. I was very pleased to do it. And this is a system that wastes a lot of people's time. And keeps Making American jobs for Americans, David. The people that they want is the type of 
uh, reform that this immigration... So are you suggesting that any employer should be able to hire anybody from any place with no restriction? I didn't say that. I said that it should be a much easier to hire the people that you want to hire. With, with regard it's pretty to easy E-Verify, right now. You don't go to jail. Focus on E-Verify for one moment. Sure. So E-Verify um, creates massive penalties, five years in jail for an employer who hires someone. That, now, those penalties are already are there, the by the way. Stealing, they are not the ones stealing Social Security numbers from American citizens. Your, your, your analogy is incorrect. That is the part of the immigrant. If, the, if you want to deport the immigrant for, for stealing someone's Social Security card, that is an entirely different matter. Making employers act as I- immigration agents on behalf of the government is totally un uh, totally unjustifiable that's nonsense david that's like you know similarly i run a company and i have to certify that the 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 products that i pay that i buy i've paid sales tax on or that that my that my bookkeeping is in order it's like saying you know you could say well having an employer be forced to play, play the role of the irs and make sure that their their accounting is correct is entirely in a, it, it, the privilege of doing business business is, doing business in this country is a privilege it's not a right it's a privilege and it's a privilege that comes with responsibilities one of those responsibilities is that your books are clean another responsibility is that your business practices are appropriate another responsibility is that you hire people who are legally citizens of the United States that's been the law in this country since the 1920s that's inaccurate actually so it- your history is a little bit off. It was actually under Ronald Reagan that the, was the first time that we ever criminalized hiring um, unauthorized immigrants in the United States. So, actually, it was in 1886. And no, it that's, was the, that's, is, that's it was entirely the, inaccurate. You can was, look at the history on in, this. In, 18, in, in 1886, the first time we passed that a we law. ever create penalties. No, in 1886, for, there was a law passed that would have made it illegal to import people from China. Right. So that's in, that is totally different from saying that we are going to penalize employers who that was hire the first time. But no, that was that was that was that was to penalize the railroads for bringing in strike breaking labor from China. That was the first time but that we penalized that employers. About, the, the law that you are talking about prohibited making contracts with with immigrants in other countries in exchange for them coming over to the United States and working for a given employer. That's what it prohibited. It did not prohibit or create penalties for hiring people who were already in the United States. That did not happen until under Ronald Reagan. So you can blame Reagan for a lot of things, but you can't... So why did Reagan never enforce, if if you're right, and Reagan is the one who put into place this law, and all that hysteria around the Braceros in the the 1960s was absolutely unnecessary because no employer ever would have gone to jail anyway... Um, but if you're right, then let's, let's stipulate that you are for the purposes of this conversation. Okay. Why didn't Reagan enforce his own law? Well, actually, the, the most enforcement that ever happened was initially um, the, the penalties were enforced. But then why did Bush stop enforcing the law? After 1990, the GAO found that the sanctions on employers were encouraging employers to discriminate against foreign-born or foreign-looking individuals, even if they were legal, to work in the United States. And so due well, you to can, the you can make that brought illegal. on by liberals and the ACLU and immigrant rights groups, they said, we're not going to enforce this law. And the Clinton administration ultimately stopped enforcing almost entirely. So it's all and the fault. Bush administration ended up enforcing it much more vigorously. Yeah, it's all Clinton's fault. Okay. All right, David Beer, policy analyst with the Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI. We never did get to what biometric is. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do that another time. David, thank okay. you for dropping by today. No problem. Tom. Good talking. Thanks. We'll be back. This is the Tom Hartman program. So, what's wrong with E-Verify? I don't get it. And what's wrong with throwing employers in jail? Speaking as an employer, well. 